Hey everyone and welcome to another painting video. In today's video I show you how I painted this geisha inspired painting with acrylics and oil paints. Before we start I would like to thank Wix for sponsoring this video. Wix is a free platform that allows you to create beautiful, highly customizable, robust websites for almost every purpose, be it to build a business, your personal brand, your online shop or portfolio. The advanced drag and drop editor gives you complete creative freedom and helps you to realize your ideas. With beautifully designed templates and all-in-one management, Wix offers hundreds of templates, unlimited pages and top-grade hosting for free. When Wix approached me, I was immediately hooked because I love creating websites. That was my hobby and profession back in the days. So I went trying out their website editor and I absolutely loved it. When you log into Wix, you click on your website first and then you get to your dashboard. Here you get an overview of the various functions that Wix offers you, like marketing tools to get found on Google, the email campaign editor, the social media post editor and of course the website editor. The editor offers you countless tools to build your website, starting with the basic completely customizable design on which you can build up on with a plethora of possibilities. The editor not only includes the usual elements like adding images, videos or galleries to your website, it also goes one step further and offers you a huge library of stock graphics that you can use for free on your website like vector arts, arrows, shapes and professionally styled modern design elements that make everything look so much more beautiful and pretty. I am seriously impressed by that editor you guys. You can add contact forms, buttons, PayPal donations, boxes, menus, music, blogs, stores and even databases and this is just a fraction of the things that you can do with that editor. If you have a YouTube channel even, you can showcase your favorite videos on your website and just make it an overall beautiful place. And if that is not enough for you, you can also install additional apps that furthermore enhance the functions of your website. For my Wix website I installed for example the Amazon app, which allows me to show my favorite art supplies that I used for my latest paintings. Here are some examples that I found fascinating to add to my website a forum, an event calendar, a live chat or an art store that automatically print my art on marks, t-shirts and framed prints and I don't have to even lift a finger. It's seriously so much fun to discover what I can do with that editor. If you want to see the website that I created with Wix, just follow the link in the video description and check it out. Now, if you want to get started with Wix too, just visit wix.com slash go slash Leoba and get 15% off a yearly premium plan with my code Leoba15. You can also just follow the link in the video description and get your promo code there. I am working again with my favorite acrylic paints, which are at the moment the 60 colors from Arteza. They are my favorite because they are super cheap, you have tons of colors and whenever one color runs out, you can replace it with a better high pigmented paint, which I have done with the black and the white so far. I only recently started to paint with acrylics and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on paints, so the paints from Arteza are really great. Also, if you have 60 colors, you can just pick what colors fit to your painting and those colors that you use the most often you can then replace. If I wanted to start building my palette, sometimes I would pick the wrong colors that I wouldn't even use, but this way I know what colors I will use and so I can just replace them comfortably with better paints whenever they are empty. So this is a great starter palette for beginner acrylic painters in my opinion. If you like to see what other materials I'm using, just have a look at the video description. I've listed all the art supplies that I used to create this painting with links where to purchase them. Okay, and now let's start with the painting. So actually this is one of seven commissions that I am currently working on. It is super hectic and chaotic because I want to finish all of them in the next month or two. So. <laughs> That is a little bit stressful, but it is super fun because all the paintings are so beautiful and I'm just so grateful that so many people are commissioning art for me, so this is amazing. And this is a geisha inspired painting. My client wanted a very serene and a beautiful looking girl, maybe a modern version of a geisha, and I made a digital mock-up before I started the painting. This is what I always do. I create digital mock-ups in Photoshop, which I 
then change and adjust until I or my client is happy with it before I even begin the painting process. Since I am a professional painter and I live from my art, I have to be very organized and scheduled with my time management, so everything that saves time is absolutely crucial for me. So this is why I put all the time in preparing the artwork before I even begin painting it. After having finished the digital mock-up, I traced it with tracing paper onto my canvas. Here again, this is just because I can save time. It is a lot of fun to do your drawing free-handedly or to not use a mock-up at all and just be completely free with your painting. This is all wonderful and I have done these kinds of techniques in the past, but the fastest way for me is to create artworks this way. I get a lot of angry comments from people that I trace my artworks, but this is the reason why I do it and I won't change it. So you can really do it like you want it and what is the best way for you to create your artworks. It's totally free. Like Art is completely free and no one actually should tell you how you do your art. So this is my opinion on that. Anyways, so after I have traced the mock-up onto my canvas, I finally began painting and I of course started with acrylic paints. So the reason why I start with acrylics is that they dry on the spot. I can paint and paint and I don't have to wait until my elements of the compositions are dried like I have to do it with oils. There I need to wait for a couple of days until one element is dried. So I prefer acrylics for this technique. As you can see, I painted in the face super roughly. This is just the first layer. I don't pay attention to blendings or to any fine details. I just fill in the color and try to be as accurate as possible in the first layer. The main point is to fill in each element of the composition first so that later on if I wanted to add a second layer with acrylics I can finalize it and bring it to a point where I'm happy with it. In the first layer of the face I am super rough and in the second layer I'm a little bit more accurate and precise and work on more details. I'm using a detail brush to get in small areas like the waterline of the eye or the irises or the lips for example and I concentrate on colors and color values. Since I'm working with acrylics I don't really pay attention to blending the color. It is very hard to blend colors in acrylics because as I said in the beginning they dry super fast and then you can't blend anymore. There's a little trick which helps the color to dry not as fast and this is a paint medium called retarder. I use a retarder from Golden. I have linked it in the video description. I absolutely love that. It is amazing. It also changes the consistency of the paint and makes the paint a little bit thinner, which is good if you use thicker paint. As I said in the beginning, I replaced the black and the white already with paints from Liquitex, heavy body acrylics actually, and they are super thick. So if I want to mix them, I always add retarder to them so that, that the consistency is a little bit better. But nevertheless, the gradients and the blendings will never be as good as with oils. And this is why I switch to oils later on in the process but only on certain areas of the painting and not everywhere because I don't need super smooth blending everywhere. Which brings us to the next elements of the composition. I continued filling out the hair with acrylics and the flowers and here are some things that I would like to add to painting hair. It is absolutely fantastic to paint hair with acrylics. I find it amazing because I like to add hair strands with single brush strokes or with my flat brush for example, then I add a big chunk of hair. And with oils I have to wait until that is dry before I can add another chunk of hair. But with acrylics I can just use for example a hair dryer and then I can add another detail of the hair. So I find that that painting hair with acrylics is definitely like superior to oils in my opinion at least. Especially complicated hair like braids or curls. You just have endless tries and you can add so many details and if you're not happy with it just blow dry it and give it another try. I really fell in love with acrylics if you were wondering but I think you could already tell. Next I filled in the tinier details of the composition like the cherry blossoms in the background and the intricate pattern on the kimono. So if 
if I would have painted the kimono with oils, I would have had a pretty decent coverage already in the first layer. But with acrylics, sometimes you don't get a great coverage and you have to add layer over layer. But again, that's no problem because you can just use a hairdryer to dry your painting and then add another layer. When painting intricate details on fabric, or in clothing, acrylic is amazing because for the leaves on the fabric, I first painted in those floral elements and then as an additional step, I cut them out with the black of the kimono. This way I get those super sharp edges. For the smaller details on the kimono, of course, I switched to the detail brush and I just filled in the pattern here. To paint the butterflies, I first started with the blacks at the edges of the wings and I filled that in on each butterfly. Then I mixed the inside color, which is some sort of a pale yellow and green mix, which I applied with a flat brush from the outside to the wings to the inside of the butterfly. And that's it for the first layer. Then for the background, I mixed a vibrant sky blue. This was pretty hard for me actually, because when acrylic paint dries, it gets a little bit darker. So whenever I had the exact right shade of blue, and I applied it to the background a couple of minutes later when it was dried, it was already a couple of shades darker. So I think I overpainted the background three times until I had the right color and I stored that paint in a yogurt pot <laughs> so that I can use the exact same paint later on in the process for my abstractions because I knew that I could never ever remix this same exact shade of blue again. After I had filled in the painting, I added my dripping effects with acrylic and water. I just watered down the acrylic paints until it was very thin and I let it run down over the painting and it turned into a complete mess. It looked horrible, <laughs> but this is pretty normal for my process. I really like to add those abstractions to my painting. And since I repaint over it later on, I don't mind really much if I accidentally destroy some areas of the painting. Then began the meticulous part of the painting process. I started with the cherry blossoms because I felt that they were the most difficult part of the painting. Everything else I feel I had a grip on, but the cherry blossoms, man, they were difficult. So <laughs> I started them by just applying my usual flower painting technique where I would add grays, whites and very pale ochre tones with a round brush to indicate flower petals, but it didn't really work out. And after a couple of layers and a lot of frustration, I decided to give each individual cherry blossom a contour and just work out further details and be a little bit more precise and then I was quite happy with them. But it didn't really work out to paint them loose in the beginning. This just looked like a mess to me. So I had to put in the work and pretty much painted every cherry blossom. Then I worked on the kimono again. I used the same technique as I used in the first layer with the difference that now where I had more information already on the canvas so that I can here build on top of those details and I could add the intricate pattern on the kimono and I could work over some of the abstractions and work out some more of the fabric again. And now comes the most important part of the painting actually. And this is the oil painting part of the face. So you can just paint with oils over acrylics in the case you didn't know that. You don't need to seal your painting. Of course you can do that, but it is not necessary. I know a lot of you will disagree now, but I have done this 10 years ago with some of my older paintings and nothing happened. So it is fine, you can do that. But of course it probably depends on the paint too. So you never know with the materials. I didn't have any problems so far, but feel free to share your recommendations if you have any. I just paint over the acrylic part with oils and the reason why I do that is because as I said in the beginning I can't really blend with acrylics but I can do that with oils. So the first layer of acrylics serves the same purpose as a first layer of oil does. Whenever I paint portraits with oils I also paint in several layers sometimes even three or four layers. For this portrait, I only used two layers of acrylics and one layer of oils. So I almost already finished the portrait in acrylics and I only used the oil painting layer to perfect this 
tiny little portrait. Since I only wanted to use one layer of oils, I had to be super focused and used my tiny detail brush to work in all the details. Here it is important that you don't use any paint mediums like for example liquid original because it dilutes the oil paint and this portrait is very small in size and you don't want to do that. You want to have very thick paint so that it sticks well to the surface and you can make blendings as well. Painting this small face takes a lot of attention to detail and I think I needed about two hours to add the final layer of oils. So don't get me wrong if you think it is a super fast way to paint. It is very fast because you don't have to wait for drying times but you still have to put in the work. So you still have to put in as much work as you would do when you would paint only with oils for example. I absolutely enjoyed painting this portrait though because the girl is just so beautiful. I just fell in love with this face. I added some of the tiny little freckles on her nose just to make it even more realistic and then I was finished with it. So I'm really happy with how the painting looked and the face really brought it together in the end. I pretty much finished everything until I switched to oils and so I couldn't really grasp how the final painting would look only when I had finished the face. For a final step I added some abstractions and tints to the painting because I didn't want everything to look very flat and boring I guess. So I added some abstractions and tints also just with acrylics so that they would dry fast and not need a week. And I titled the painting 1000 Springs and that's it. This is how I painted this geisha inspired portrait commission and if you want to learn more I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my patreon site in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just five dollars a month you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real-time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the extra portion of art you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more I send you a beautiful set of three unique unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turned them into beautiful magnets, stickers and postcards which are not only wonderful decorations for your home but also are rare collectibles because once I send them out they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash leobarbrückner. I hope you found this video helpful and you could get something out of it. So if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. See you in the next one. Bye bye.